and welcome to Season of War. Uh, back again today with a very special uh, <laughs> battle report for you, as this is uh, the channel debut of uh, my good buddy and competitive teammate, Carl. Hello. Welcome, Carl. Hello, hello. It's a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. I've been hounding him for months <laughs> uh, to get out here and film a battle report, but we've been busy, uh, or you've been busy painting and testing right. and all right. that fun stuff. Right. Anyways, we have a match up that we've played a ton before. A lot. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Carl brought his KO. I am playing my Deepkin. These are our two tournament armies. We just came back from an event a few days ago uh, in which Carl took first and I took second. Yep. But today's matchup is a little bit more interesting because we're actually both trying out uh, different sub-factions that haven't been our regular competitive ones lately. Correct. Um, so with that, do you want to go through actually the mission and matchup and sure. then we'll talk about our armies? Uh, so we are going to be playing Total Conquest. So there's four objectives on either the middles of the table quarters. Uh, you score one point for controlling each. You score an additional point for taking it off of your opponent and an additional point for uh, leaders that are close by yes. and you control them. Uh, we're going to be playing in the Realm of Shaman, which has the spell which gives you plus one save. Uh, everything is entangling, so minus two to your run and charge, which is going to be a little bit uh, to my advantage. Uh, and then the Realm Command is plus one to hit when you charge. Yeah, that's actually very important. And I forgot about that during deployment, the The minus the two. two to run. But hey... I could have avoided it by being two inches further out. Which is about the same anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so, so in the best position I can be, it doesn't really hurt. But going through armies, uh, I'm running Futhon for the first time in a while. This was actually my <laughs> tournament, uh, similar to my tournament build last year. This is the army that lets me flip the tides. So I can uh, actually have run and charge turn one and attack first uh, round two. So uh, that's pretty big. My Tidecaster is my general that lets me do that. Um, has the spell Steed of Tides that lets me do a uh, 24 inch hero teleport. So I can teleport themselves or my you know other heroes. Other than that, I'm running 30 thralls as battle line. I have two units of three Morsar, one off the board with my Soul Strier, then another unit of six Morsar, and then three units of three defensive eels. Again, also brought in uh, two units there of is. three Aether Wings. But again, pretty standard for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of fast things and a lot of thralls. Seen this it time. before. Yeah. Uh, what are you running today? Uh, so I'm running KO, uh, Barak Zilfin, which allows me to teleport in my hero phase, which is going to be important, I think, mm -hmm. in our matchup. Uh, for battle line, I'm running 20 Arcanauts, 10 Arcanauts, 10 Arcanauts, uh, six engine riggers as well, a gun hauler, and the big boy, the ironclad. Um, and three heroes, a chemist, a navigator, and the engine master with dirigible suit. So, uh, and the important part of my list is uh, spell in the bottle with the chemist. Uh, a lot of people take the vortex, but today I'm taking the geminids. Yeah, a, a test you want to try out, right? Correct, yeah. correct. So, yeah, it'll be an interesting match. Obviously a little different than our typical one, so yeah. it'll be fun for us. Yeah, opposite uh, day. Yes. But uh, as per usual, you are out dropping me here uh, quite significantly. So you're going to have choice of uh, first turn here. So uh, I will do something I don't usually do, and I will give you first turn. OK. So you're giving me first turn. Mm -hmm. I will not reverse the tides. OK. So okay. currently so, cover. So I will have cover round one and normal order. Attack round first, two. round two. Uh, sorry. Run and charge round two, attack first, turn three, and then uh, run and charge again round four. Gotcha. And then cover. Yeah. Okay. But right. with that, we'll go into round one with Deep Ines Deepkin going first. Yeah. All right. Good luck.
All right, so Deepkin turn one. I didn't really uh, get into combat at all. Obviously put out zero damage this turn. Besides the one damage my Aether Wave <laughs> took from my own boat. Other than that, it gave me a chance to really spread out, take board control here, um, which is again, like you, you said earlier, something you're you know, worried about giving away the turn. You know, I'm playing a little more defensively this round. You're going to have a chance to do some shooting and teleporting around, but uh, it might be a little tougher to take me off some of the objectives. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Obviously, uh, I'm feeling like I'm in a great position, but you never know uh, with the strength of KO shooting and the double turn, you might have a good chance to take a lot of stuff off. But I'm at least in cover this round. That helps mitigate it. And... Again, you don't get to choose necessarily what you want to shoot at. No. So you're going to have to be going into a lot of things, either the birds, which are just a waste of shots, or the defensive eels uh, that are ignoring your end. end. So yeah. going, to be, going to be a tough army to chew through, obviously. But with that, we'll be going into the bottom of round one and turn one for the Karadron Overlords. All right, so just finish up your first turn with KO. Mm -hmm. um, so my big decision point as the KO player was which flank I was going to strike. So I decided to hit the flank that potentially, if I was to go first on the second turn, able to get me six offensive eels, as mm -hmm. opposed to on this end, which I get thralls if I double. Yeah. So that was the decision point. I went in. I forced you to use Cod of Midnight. Yeah, um, getting that charge into them and into my king. Yeah, I have yeah. to use that to stay alive. Um, took the point off, so we're tied 5-5. Five, five, so I think I'm in a good position going into round two. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that, we can get into priority. <laughs> All win ties. Five. Two. Yeah, I will take it. All right, so we will go into uh, top of round two with KO going first this round.
All right, so KO turn two. Yeah, uh, continue to try to push that flank. I ended up charging my hero into six eels, thinking that maybe he's going to survive the shock and take some of them out with him, but uh, he died. <laughs> yeah, he did not. <laughs> I Worth noting, you know, a, a unit of six averages five mortal wounds. Yeah. I got nine there, yeah. so well above average. Spiked really hard, but... Yeah. To his demise, he don't, yeah. Yeah, didn't even have a chance. <laughs> he didn't have a chance. Uh, teleported the boat from one table edge to the opposite table edge and was um, attempted to clear that space, and I did, uh, which got me a few points. Yeah. But I'm worried about the double now. <laughs> yeah, there's that threat, but your boat's trying to protect it there. and Yeah, uh, we still have threats on the board. A lot to play for. Yeah, and... I really got to get onto the objectives and start storing. You scored a big five, so I have to answer that, yep. um, obviously, because that's what it's all about in the end. Mm -hmm. So with that, we'll be going to bottom round two, and okay. I death deep in turn two. All right, so finished up bottom of turn two and deepkin turn. It's not looking good for the no, dwarves. No, it's not. Yeah. It is not. Uh, and pretty much it's just, you know, the same old story of getting to move really fast and getting yeah. lots of units into effective positions to kill stuff. And yeah. while I'm not getting into your big boats, you still have your 10 thunderers in the boat, so still a lot of firepower. You're just in a tough spot now on the objectives. Yep. Um, obviously five over here. I wasn't really worried about anyone getting hit, so I got to go in my thralls first, who even took that objective. So I actually took all four objectives. 
Right. Charging my Soul Strider over here to get the additional third point on that one. Yep. So three there, three here because I took it from you and have my hero. Yep. I have two from this one to put me to eight because I have my yeah. uh, Tide Caster. And then they took that one for another two. Ten. So that's 10 for the round. 10 points. Putting us at 15, 10. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a big swing. Um, and honestly, like, you know. I'm, I'm in a tough spot. Tough okay. spot, yeah. You're going to have a lot of shooting, um, but the fact that this was after your double, yeah. you're not... If the, if this was like going into your turn and you had a chance to double after, but I could still get priority here. Correct. And I'm in yeah. huge trouble there. Yeah. So... All right. Let's roll it. Three. Two. Uh -huh. So you do get it. So I still have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have to take it. All right. So we'll be going into round three. KO. And KO turn three. I took the turn uh, and was able to accomplish a little bit. Quite a lot of killing. A lot of killing, but not mm. a lot of objective grabbing. I didn't manage to get any of the objectives, which means we are at 15-10 going into Jordan's turn. Yes. So uh, I think yeah. it's close well, to being is. over in terms of points, but we'll see what, it, what we can kill. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be hard for me to take care of your boats, but again, it's just yeah. store at this the point. Bodies. Yeah. Big thing was my thralls. Again, round three, I'm attacking the start of the phase, so my thralls were able to take out your last three Arcanauts. Yep. Made it very difficult for you to take that one, and you know, multiple units on the others just yep. can't hit them all. Correct. So we'll go into bottom of round three, I do that turn three. Yep.
bottom of round three, just finished up deep intern, yeah. and obviously was able to do a good amount of work and take out your two boats, um, yeah. and a number of your thunders at, when they you know jumped Popped out. Up. Yeah. So puts the game pretty far out of reach at this point, just just on points because mm -hmm. again, I didn't get two here because I left my hero yeah. off, um, but I score six this round. Correct. Yeah. Puts me uh, just out of reach. Correct. Oh, with with what you got left. So a tough one for for the KO, but yeah. we know we played this matchup. So this is times. like yeah. Deepkin is the the bane of KO. Yeah. It's like their worst possible matchup. So we are coming into this knowing that that's usually the outcome, Correct. right? Is yeah. is KO uh, having a hard time? Yeah. But again, testing the new list. What did you think of the changes? Or uh, the ability to deep strike in the hero phase is 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 big and, and able to move afterwards puts me at a greater reach than than my previous list and uh and fitting in the geminids instead of the warp lightning vortex i think will be something i will take going forward just because it allows me to uh mitigate some of that double turn yeah um yeah we had that big question of uh whether i should have taken the double from first to second so, yeah and um, you were you're saying you were saying that you think you should have i should have given, given that, it away yeah correct yeah my my previous list didn't give me that latitude to to give away turn so i have this you know you used to habit. automatically taking it yeah, yeah i have the habit of taking turn all the time uh immediately um but if i thought about it more since geminids were there if i was to be hateful to hit multiple units uh and give them minus mm -hmm. one to hit or minus one to to their attack i think yes i can mitigate a lot of that mitigates so much like yeah. you know with that unit of six at minus one attack yeah. or minus one to hit yeah that punish them, punishes them so bad. Yeah. Um, and uh, the hero charging in, I wanted to see what he can do, but yeah. <laughs> ended up just, just blowing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But he's he's good. He's good for his points. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy with him too. It gives me the option to, to move around very quickly. Yep. For me, not too much of a different list other than running Futhan. Uh, which is what was fun to go back to uh, yeah. uh, what I was doing last year, yeah. uh, getting 30 thralls in. I love thralls, <laughs> love the models. Oh. They can do work. Yeah, they kill the seen. boat. So. Yeah, they, they put 12 wounds on the boat, yeah. you know, at, with, from seven guys. Yeah. Uh, so they, they obviously have great potential. Yeah. Um, and when you have so many eels running around, the thralls can just slowly sneak up and get in there. Yeah, which uh, is what dish, happened. Dish that was some uh, damage. So focused on the the eels that the yeah. thralls crept up and there's a throw there's one unit of thralls in each basically yeah. almost edge of every corner of the yeah. map so but yeah obviously tough game for ko uh yeah. but but good match regardless yeah always have fun yeah and uh, uh it gives me gives me some insight to how this list works and how i should play it yeah, forth. starting to get some practice yeah. with it for sure yeah well we'll have to have you back either uh with a different matchup, you have a bunch of armies, and I, do as well, uh, I so. can pull out some others as well. Um, so we'll have another game soon, I'm sure. Yep. But I want to say a big thank you at the end to everyone who stuck around and, and checked out the video. Love to hear your feedback and discussion. Always like you know engaging with everyone in the comments. Great to get some good competitive uh, and tactical uh, discussion going on down there. So talk to you soon, and thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.